Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. <clears throat> My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. This is what I call my morning musings. I'm uh, trying to share a few thoughts from you, a few insights, particularly at this time on the eschatology of the parables of Jesus. We, uh, we've been in Matthew 25 looking at the first two parables, and we want to embark now on an investigation of the parable that begins with verse 31. Look, I was raised believing this just absolutely has to refer, pardon me, to some future time into the world, earth burning up, every human being who has ever lived is, uh, and died has been raised out of the grave, and now in this unbelievably massive uh, arena and scene, Every person is gathered in front of this throne. Well, I no longer believe that that is a tenable scriptural view. I believe that when we take Matthew 25, 31 and following, in its context, in its historical and in its immediate context, there is simply no way that we can re remove it from the first century. Now I want you to notice, Matthew 25, 31. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, all the angels with Him, then He will sit on the throne of His glory. Let's just stop right there, all right? And let's do a little bit of comparison. In Matthew 16, 27 and 28, Jesus said, The Son of Man will come in the glory of the Father with his angels, and shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, some standing here shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So what do we have? You have Matthew 16, the coming of the Son of Man, Matthew 25, coming of the Son of Man. The coming of the Son of Man in his glory. In the glory of the Father, Matthew 16. Matthew 25, the Son of Man coming in His glory. Matthew 16, coming with the angels. Matthew 25, coming with, the, with His angels. Matthew 16, coming to judge and reward. Matthew 25, coming to judge and reward. Matthew 16, coming in His kingdom. Matthew 25, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Matthew 16, some standing here shall not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming. Now, granted, chapter 25 does not explicitly say that. But you know what? As we continue this discussion, we will see that the context demands it absolutely demands it. But the question is, you know, some people argue, look, and this is a really, really, really bad hermeneutic. Some people argue and they say, oh, well, okay, Matthew 16, 27, and 28 sounds the same, but it has a time statement, and the time statement is not found in Matthew chapter 25. Folks, every single passage, by the way, Kenneth Gentry pointed this out when he was arguing against John Walvoord. John Walford said, oh, well, you got some constituent elements mentioned here, and you don't have the same elements mentioned over here. Kenneth Gentry properly noted, by the way, Gary DeMar did as well in one of his books, just because a given text does not contain every constituent element of eschatology does not mean it's not the same as other passages which contain those elements constituent elements. Now since we have a perfect point-by-point point comparison and parallel between Matthew 16, 27 and 28 and Matthew chapter 25, coming of the Son of Man in glory with the angels to judge in the kingdom. And Matthew 16 gives us a time statement for that, then that time statement should should control Matthew chapter 25, 31 and following, if not 
why not? You know, I haven't had anybody explain why not. And I've posed this question in numerous formal debates and innumerable private discussions. When we do our research, it is more than obvious that Matthew 16, 27, 28 is directly parallel with Matthew 25, 31 and following. And that demands that Matthew 25, 31 and following was fulfilled in the first century. Hey, look, go to my website, eschatology.org, bibleprophecy.com, order my book, we shall meet him in the air, the wedding of the king of kings. I have an extensive discussion of the parallels between Matthew 16, 27, 28 and Matthew chapter 25. It will absolutely blow you away to see how perfect and powerful those parallels are. Order the book, make a note that you, offer, that you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook and I'll refund your shipping. That'll save you $5. Well, thanks so much for joining me on this morning's morning musings. We have more on the parable of Matthew 25, 31 and following. As Jesus, is, as Jesus discusses his coming in glory with the angels, in judgment and in the kingdom. You don't want to miss it. So we'll see you on the flip side.